why is submission such a dirty word in Christianity? I want to talk about what submission actually is and how it actually is life-giving and women and men don't have to be stuck in this traditional rut or this confusing guilt-driven expectation that really isn't of what the Lord what the Lord's heart is behind how he's designed relationships to flourish. Submission is just submission to be underneath a mission that is greater. And so our calling as Christians in the kingdom of God is to submit to one another. So this isn't something that is for women only. This is actually something that God is helping us to realign our hearts so that we actually can flourish. If you want to develop habits that nurture your relationship with God to help you continue to abide, I have a five-day course down below. If two people submitted to one another, there would be so much listening, there'd be so much presence, there would be so much empowerment, there would be so much flourishing if Christians and humans would submit to one another and not try to insist on their own way. Paul in 1 Corinthians has a whole list of what love is, and love is not insisting in your own way. And so I think when women get afraid of the word submission, or it feels like, oh, the feminists get really offended by it, or people are just a little bit more like alpha female, or maybe grew up without dads, and they're like, hey, like men haven't taken care of me, I don't need a man, that's not true, and there's a whole host of other things going on in that statement, that we're missing that the gift of submission isn't to diminish a woman, it's actually to empower her. When God created men and women and created marriage to be two opposites, becoming one person, it's a symbol to mirror the love of the Trinity in God. And so when we think about marriage, it is always pointing beyond itself. It's not about personal fulfillment. That happens when we're flourishing and we're living inside God's kingdom and his design, but we live in a fallen, broken world. That does not happen all the time. Even some of the healthiest, good marriages, people can make mistakes and neglect one another and are so self-centered. I'm self-centered. So submission is actually part of how we model God's relationship. This isn't about whether your husband is worthy to submit to or not. Really what it's about is first learning to submit to Christ. What does it mean to submit to Christ? To be underneath his mission. What is God's mission? To redeem and to transform the world, to bring all of his children, all the people that he created back into harmony relationship with him so that we can be in his love and that we can walk and be with him all the days of our life to eternity. That is the good news of this, that Jesus has made a way for us to be reconciled back to him. When we think about Jesus and the church, which is the bridegroom and the bride, and we have the husband who is model of love and relationship is Jesus, which is a real tall standard, actually a lot higher than a woman's standard needs to be. Um, no pressure, gentlemen. But when we see the church as in submission to Christ, because Christ laid down his life, and the church is also an example of how the woman is supposed to say, I'm going to follow you. You are the head of the household. Now we live in a fallen, broken world. And if we kept those standards to like perfection, no one would ever get married because we are so imperfect. We are full of flaws and we are in process. So that's why God gives us a lot of us to marriage just because we need to learn how to actually be with another person sometimes who feels like our worst enemy. And so how do you submit to somebody who feels like your worst, worst enemy? We wanna rebel, we wanna push back, we wanna say, excuse me, no, 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 like you're not spiritually leading us. How many women are the, drag their husbands to therapy, drag their husbands to church and say, we're going to church. And I've heard this actually from men. Women just tend to keep the families together that women will just get up, even if they're sick, they'll just get it done. And men can tend to skirt their responsibilities. Women can too, but women have a tendency to be over responsible. I know I do. I struggle with this all the time. I have gotten so resentful because there's been an expectation that was subconscious where my husband and I first got married that I was gonna do all of the household things, but I also work a full-time job. And so I would get really bitter and resentful and I'm starting to, I started to get ahead of it by finally just saying like, hey, I wanna work with you, I'm really tired, I work 40 hours and you work 40 hours, there's about 10 to 15 hours worth of homework, can we split this up? It got this advice from my pastor's wife and she's like, you know, I, I always had this pressure to that I needed to fulfill this like 
woman of duty. And when I finally felt the freedom from the Lord that we can just operate out of our gifts, that we don't need to worry about these traditional archetypes that culture has created or that history has created. Now, if the laundry needs to be done, yeah, okay, so the woman can do it, but the man can also do it too. It, it's not diminishing somebody's manhood or womanhood. Submission does not mean a woman has to cook all the time or that a man, man can't stay at home with the kids. Some people might disagree with that. This is just my opinion. I just feel like if somebody is flourishing in God's kingdom, we're supposed to submit to one another and live out of the image that we have inside of us. How do we maybe submit as women to men who are a little oppressive? Oppression is putting down or pushing against, minimizing somebody who they are. I don't have Webster's Dictionary in front of me. When we hear, hear the word oppression, we can feel like, oh, that's awful. We want to rebel against, push back because it's diminishing. It's disempowering. It is, it's awful. It's neglect and it's, it's abuse. Manhood is not abusing women. Manhood is actually having intimacy with Christ and letting Christ teach him and model humility and love and meekness that when, when everyone was accusing Jesus when he was be, gonna be crucified, he doesn't say anything. That is, that's meekness, that is power under restraint. That is saying, I'm not going to use my power to hurt you. I value the image of God in you and I, I know what my mission is and I'm committed to it. So that's the model for men to live in. And women can tend, and I know I do this, I tend to be the spiritual leader. I'm the one who went to seminary. I have a degree in theology. And so it can be really easy for me to be the spiritual leader. And in some ways, I am the spiritual leader. And growing up, I never would have thought that was okay. Or I was looking for this spirit, magical spiritual leader that like was a pastor. And I felt like I could only marry a pastor because that person would be finally serious enough about their faith. But my husband is really serious about his faith, but he doesn't express it in the way I do. He doesn't read the way I do. I have a different calling than he does. And he doesn't feel disempowered. He actually gets to be who he is. He does some of the traditional female things and he does a lot of the traditional male things. He's into sports and it doesn't matter. Like, why does that matter? I think we get caught in the weeds because of this Pharisee and this morality inside of us where it doesn't matter if we're operating out of our gifts Praise God, we're called to flourish in God. The Bible talks about how we are not Jew or Gentile or male or female, but we were all one in Christ. We are all part of God's mission. We submit to God and we submit to one another. That is a call for humans, not for women alone. Now in marriage, it again is always a mirror to what God is doing in the world or what God is doing in, the, in his kingdom. I don't submit to my husband because I think that's right or God's gonna love me more. I submit to him and when I mean submit, I just, I listen to what his mission and calling is. He actually has a different mission and calling than I do, but we join together and we co-create. And I use my gifts to support him and he uses his gifts to support mine. And they're both aligned with God's mission because we're both submitting to God. And so even though we both have brokenness and I have my anger and my issues, we are aligning ourselves with how do we flourish and how do we listen to God in these moments versus who has more power in the relationship, who is um, controlling the other person. Part of my role as a wife is to push back on his lack of sometimes responsibility. And I think submission isn't going along with some, what someone says and they say, oh yeah, well, if it's against God's law, but sometimes it's really gray and we don't know. But if say you're being treated with neglect, disrespect, that's not okay, I'm not comfortable with this, this hurts, to voice truth, that is part of God's mission, is to free us from the tyranny of our own selfishness. So when you experience your husband's selfishness or man, if you're being selfish, and it, your wife needs to call you out, that is a gift because that helps us actually learn to abide in Christ because that, whatever dynamic you're presenting in your marriage is in your relationship with God too. It's all connected, nothing spiritual and secular. It's all spiritual. If it if impacts your spiritual life, which all of our psychology, all of our trauma, our history, we bring it all in to our marriages, to our relationships, those things need to be dealt with. So we need to set boundaries and say, no, I'm not gonna deal with abuse and I need to figure out what in me is enabling this dynamic. When women enable or are codependent and like allow men to do some of those things, that is not submit submitting. That is actually a self-abandonment. That is actually denying reality and living in a fantasy. We need to be honest with one another, even when it's really painful, even when we might get backlash. Our husbands might be mad at us, like, how dare you disrespect me? And who do you think you are? It's like, ooh, where is that coming from? That's about him, first of all. That's not your fault. 
And honoring your husband means you need to honor God. The Lord treats you with so much respect. We see how Jesus treats women in the Bible. He treats them with so much honor and dignity. And that's what we have because we are all one in Christ. Even when their leadership is poor or isn't what you want, is actually saying, I'm not gonna be over responsible and neglect myself and let go of who God has called me to be. I'm actually going to live in my calling and present the truth to you and honor you because I honor the Lord. I honor the Lord first. And when we learn to submit to him, and I don't just mean submit because we're supposed to, and it's the right thing to do. It is. We need to be motivated by love. When we are so deeply loved by God, when we experience people being unloving towards us, even our closest, most intimate relationships, we can learn to withstand it and to reflect back to them, maybe what they're doing in their life versus taking responsibility for it, putting them down, cursing at them, fighting, all those things. We don't have to worry about submitting. You have your calling as a woman. You honor your husband and honor God because you are honorable, because you are worthy of honor. The image of God in you is. And so when you stay connected to that, your true self, it makes honoring your husband easy, even when it's difficult. You need to live in your calling from God and enable him to live in his calling from God. And that might mean stepping up into some leadership. How are you flourishing as a wife And how are you listening to God in the midst of your relationship and allowing him to take responsibility and to fulfill his calling and you to fulfill yours? And I think once we can feel some peace about that, it'll make submission so much easier than thinking it's minimizing versus like helping people feel alive. I'm curious what your thoughts are. I know this topic brings up a lot of feelings inside of us because of how we've experienced our past. And so I do want to say if this has, you know, piqued your interest in kind of the idea of flourishing, I do have a three month course and coaching spiritual direction process that I take people through to help understand their story and to figure out where they're stuck in their relationship with God, which will impact your relationship with others. So if you're like, how do I actually make God the center of my life versus doing these unhealthy patterns, then my course might be definitely a place for you to consider. So book a call with me. We can discern if that might be a right fit for you and it might not be, but Either way, I would love to just chat with you about it. So so book a call or or email me down below. And I also have a free rule of life course. Yeah, I'd love to know your thoughts about this and if this was helpful at all or what other parts you have questions on. I would love to maybe share with a follow-up video. Okay, I'll see you in the next one.